Well, right now I'm getting a lot of questions about uh, oil. Of course, it's it's always in the press, but then uh, we had we had Senate hearings uh, here in the U.S. and you get guys like uh, the uh, it's ultimate irony, I think. Uh, you get guys like George Soros, uh, who, by the way, legendary currency trader. If you did not already know that, uh, his adventures in the currency market are. Uh, great bedtime reading so if you haven't seen it already uh, or read it already certainly something to google uh, make sure that you check out his role in the collapse of the bank of england a couple of decades ago so uh it uh the comments are that um, crude oil is in a bubble and uh, to one to one extent or another is being driven by speculators well, we all know what happens to bubbles. Eventually, they, they pop. And e even if it's not a bubble, we uh, suspect that there's eventually going to be corrections. Uh, now, how deep those corrections are is, is an excellent question. But there are, uh, from, a, from a Forex trader's perspective, there are a couple of places that make sense to uh, look for ways to leverage oil prices. And there are a couple of places that it does not make sense, in my mind, to look for uh, ways to benefit from oil prices that are less reliable. So, for example, I have the I have the crude oil. This is the the crude oil contract on the NYMEX. Uh, this is just the continuous contract. So, um, uh, you can see it, so so you don't see the futures breaks. But anyway, you'll notice that we're creeping up around this uh, indecision point, this consolidation pattern that occurred there in the beginning of May. So a break here would be very interesting. If everybody gets really pumped up that, oh, in fact, this is a bubble and, uh, and drive oil prices down to the next level of support, which would be uh, down here at the top of the market in uh, April at about uh, 118 or so, uh, then we have a potentially a trading opportunity. It, perhaps, certainly, if you're a futures trader in uh, oil prices, buying the break here of 124, uh, uh, with the, where the market was really undecided is a very interesting opportunity. But I find that a lot of traders will automatically say, well, if, a break it, if oil breaks, let's jump into the CAD, you know, a weaker CAD or a weaker Aussie. Well, now I wouldn't necessarily disagree with that. However, um, there are uh, potentially other ways to look at this. And th there was something that I might contrast with this is between the, the, the CAD or something that we might consider one of the majors it are some of the more exotic currencies that uh, will do, could result in a lot more volatility and potentially a much more direct relationship between a, uh, a correction in the oil market than if we are dealing with a uh, a bubble and if there's some political pressure to take some action we could see a pretty sharp correction in the oil market well we certainly could see a weaker a weaker Canadian dollar for sure but we have to balance what's going on in Canada and Australia with just well lower oil prices um, it may in fact spur more growth uh, particularly more North American growth and th that in turn could keep the Canadian dollar in this balance in this channeling range that we've been dealing with uh, over the last uh, over the last several months, between about 9,800 and uh, uh, you know, about two and a half cents over parity up here on the top. So, uh, I, I, so while certainly an acceptable alternative, we may look at a couple other pairs, and even in the short term, let me let me uh, illustrate my point. Like the CAD, I love the Mexican peso because it just channeled like crazy. It was uh, a really reliable channeling currency. There were a couple of uh, uh, support and resistance levels you could draw that the market would just uh, uh, bounce between them uh, like clockwork. And you can see that in play here over 2007 and part of 2006. But if we zoom in here a little bit, uh, the last time we were expecting a bounce back here in March, the market broke through support and really took off to the downside. This coincided, by the way, with um, there, there was some uh, a significant amount of volatility right there at the very beginning of April, very end of March in the oil market. We had a, a, a break, big gap, uh, popped right back up again, and <coughs> that volatility kicked the Mexican peso loose, which if you didn't know, is a significant player in the oil market and is certainly impacted by oil prices. 
So e even to a greater extent than I think uh, uh, the currencies like the uh, Canadian uh, dollar is, uh, especially when you consider the volatility. Well, you'll notice that since this break, the the pesos lost about three thousand pips uh, plus a little bit, may maybe maybe even four thousand pips, depending on where the break, where you consider that the break actually occurred. So a breakdown in uh, oil prices may not get us all the way back up to uh, previous resistance, but it could definitely take us up to this uh, resistance level here, the highs of the market in the beginning of May, which is at about uh, 105500. Well, that's 2400 pips away. So this is one of the reasons why I say, look, uh, th there may be some opportunities in the uh, uh, from a volatility perspective in the near term for some profit for some profit opportunities in some of the uh, more exotic currencies now by the way um, pip values on the dollar peso are 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 different than they are um, for example if you're looking at the dollar yen or something like that so the the pip value is much much smaller but um, uh, but the volatility is clearly there and depending on how you manage your leverage etc uh, that may be one of those pairs to look for it's also an interesting bellwether to uh, try to identify uh, when there might be a disruption in the oil market. It could, uh, the, sometimes the currencies will lead the oil market, sometimes the oil market will lead the currencies, but it's one definitely to watch in that they don't always move the same magnitude at the same time. So definitely um, uh, something that we keep our eye on. The second oil bubble watching currency pair that I really like is the dollar uh, Norwegian krona. So the Norwegian krona has been struggling against uh, a fairly significant uh, consolidation area. You can see it's almost uh, uh, turning into a bit of a double bottom here with the market just beginning to break up above the, the um, top of this double bottom uh, that occurred here in the very beginning of uh, May and of April. So <coughs> the, the again, oil prices play a significant role in the value of the Norwegian krona and is one of these uh, currencies that will exhibit a ton of volatility. So for example, since, uh, since the bottom of this double bottom, so at about uh, uh, five krona to the dollar, up to where the market is right now is 1,583 pips. So big moves, and uh, it, it once again, you'll notice that since the, since the uh, quote is five krona to the dollar, um, the pip value is much smaller. So you're, you're looking at like 20 cents um, pip value if you were dealing with like a mini contract or uh, the um, or two dollars if you're looking at like a major, for example. But it's all it's always a matter of how do you manage your leverage? How do you manage that uh, uh, that multiple, if you will, of what you're investing in? And w once again, the point is, well, are there other things besides just the Canadian dollar that we can watch as bellwethers? to uh, keep our eye on the oil market. And if there is uh, a crack, uh, is there some place we can go take advantage of this? This is the same kind of thought process we'd be going through if we were anticipating a big break in the credit market crisis or something like that. We'd be looking at those currencies that are going to be most sensitive to that, such as the yen or the Aussie and things like that. So I it's, it's a, uh, more than anything else, the takeaway here is uh, we may see some warning signs on these currencies uh, first before the oil market breaks or vice versa. In either case, it may present an opportunity for us uh, by trading the breakout in one market into another, particularly uh, in some of the exotic currencies that, uh, that we may not normally have included in our currency uh, investing portfolio.